entrepreneur with a passion for all things video. So without further ado, I'm going to pass things off to Juan. All right, thank you very much for the warm uh, welcome. And uh, thank you to the organizers of Free Code Camp uh, for this opportunity to be here sharing. Um, well, I was supposed to talk about something else, and then I changed the story. Oops. Um, uh, so, but you know, instead I'll tell you a story, and hopefully something good will come out of this story. Um, um, as Izzy pointed out, I'm the lead instructor at Lighthouse Labs, and I should be teaching you how to code, but I figured you're already on your way there, so I'll tell you something else. Um, this journey I'm going to talk about starts at some point in the past. And what about the first person that tells me uh, when that journey starts uh, gets a free shirt, all right? Start doing the math. Start doing the math. A Lighthouse Labs t-shirt. Okay, so that journey uh, starts uh, a long time ago. A long time ago, okay, take, take a minute to just to do the math, uh, okay, and, um, and it goes back way back to the around late 80s, okay. Um, I had just gotten my first PC, all right, uh, oh, I, we have, we have, what? No. Uh, <laughs> oh, you have it? <gasps> close, oh, close, very close, very close. Are you doing the math or just guessing? <laughs> Come on, I give you, I give you the numbers. All right, <laughs> all right. So I had just gotten my first PC, and I was very anxious to start being a developer. Right now, back in the days, new PCs were like big clunky machines, and you probably had seen them in some kind of old movies. I, mine was very big, big monitor, big box, and I was very excited about it. It was very noisy to you. Uh, around 1988, and so I managed to uh, teach myself um, some basic. And you know why basic? Well, because at the time that was the only software that came pre-installed with the PC. You would buy the PC and you would get a floppy disk, and in that floppy disk there was only one thing you could do. You could boot it and you can code basic. So, well, okay, so I guess we're learning basic. And I, I put myself to the process of learning basic all the, all the way to the point where I was able to sell my first piece of commercial software for exactly 1,000 pesos. And so that was a big milestone. I was very young, I had not going to university or anything. I was a young kid, and that meant, wow, I guess I'm stuck. I'm doing this for life. I'm doing this for life. The thrill of writing software and having someone else pay for that software was beyond me. And so, uh, so that was one thing I could do with that machine. Learn, uh, I, I learned by myself and then really just and started telling people, and eventually someone paid. The other thing, as I mentioned, that came with that machine was the operating system. Uh, back in the days, that was Microsoft DOS. Have you heard of it? Or is that? Yes, of course. Now, one thing I'll tell you about um, uh, which machines you have here represented in the room, like Macs, everyone? Yeah, Macs, Macs, yeah. Windows, everyone? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Linux machines. Yeah, there you go. So a third, a third each, good for you. So. Who, who can say they have explored 100% of every single operating system command that your machine can execute? And I mean, 100, every single command that your machine can do in the operating system, you have gone through it and you have figured out, how can I use this? Well, you know, that was the thrill of having that first PC and having Microsoft DOS. That was... That was my only thing at the time, I, I could get myself lost studying every single part of the operating system because there was nothing else to do. What else were you going to do with that machine? And so at the time, I, I figured, uh, why, why am I even learning this stuff? How is this even going to be useful? I, yes, I knew how to configure my prompt so it would do almost like a little animation in text mode, of course. Uh, every time I type a command and you know fireworks and the whole thing, but then why? Why would I 
waste my time that way. Well, I'll tell you why. Um, shortly after I sold my first um, piece of software, and I, I knew I, w I wanted to do this as a professional dev, I wasn't a professional dev, of course. I was just learning, like just playing. Uh, but um, I got myself a book, uh, because back then there was no internet. Uh, sorry, this is how far back we've gone in time. There was no internet. Oh, actually, there was internet, technically speaking, but we didn't have access to it yet. Um, so um, instead, you know, bought a book, a book on, a, on some kind of database system called DBase 3 Plus. Anyone heard of that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So we have just dated ourselves, right? Yeah. Every, everyone else is like, what is he talking about? Okay. So the base three plus is like, I don't know, what would be the equivalent today? Microsoft Access? Ah, I, don't, I don't even know what kids are using these days for database uh, on their machines. Are they? Well, I guess cool kids use Mongo, right? Right. Okay. So that was kind of a thing. It was software running in my machine that could actually help me build database applications. And it was all good. And I learned a lot about, I started learning about tables and data and queries. And of course, you didn't do queries the way you do it these days with SQL and all that, but you could do similar things. And I thought, wow, this is, I'm, I'm becoming a real pro. I'm doing serious stuff now, right? Um, and then I learned about a new tool, very modern at the time, called Clipper, which was a compiler for D-based 3 plus applications, meaning I could plan and do all my databases, and then I could actually compile them, have an executable, and sell that executable to other people with all the running software. And that was amazing. That was kind of my next step as a, as a, as a professional software developer selling, selling software. Anyway. Um, Back in the Microsoft, uh, Microsoft DOS years, uh, I ended up learning Pascal. And again, I felt that this, this ang anxiety that I want to learn absolutely everything. So I got the box, of a very fancy box with all the software and all the manuals uh, that Pascal came with. It was called uh, Turbo Pascal, uh, uh, published by a company called Borland, which probably has gone extinct by now. I don't know, have they? I, I think they're not around anymore. Anyway, we'll check that later. Uh, but the reason I was so interested in this language, this was a proper object-oriented language. And everyone says, ooh. Yeah, there you go. So um, I felt, wow, I'm, I'm doing some really interesting complex stuff, object-oriented programming. But at some point, after I had exhausted every single book, every single page, and had mastered that language, I felt, why am I doing this? Why am I learning all these things? When am I ever going to use all this stuff? And we move on to the next stage. That soon after, I mean, you're keeping track of a few years later, I land my first job as a software developer. Around 1992, and yeah, that's still a long time ago. And now I'm into the Unix years. See, because you learn things, and this is going to be an important lesson. You might just be getting started with coding. And sometimes you question, why am I even studying this thing? This, I can do this HTML thing. I can do this JavaScript thing. But really, who's going to want me to do these little playful programs? Nobody. But what happens is that little by little, whatever, whatever you learn eventually becomes part of how you do professional software and eventually comes back and you use those skills. See, all that time I spent meticulously learning my operating system with, for my first machine gave me the skills of a sysadmin. It gave me that that meticulously to, to go into the operating system and figure out how to do shell scripts because I had done that with a different language, but I knew all the steps I had to follow. All I had to learn was a different operating system, in this case, Unix. And so I found myself, not because I bought it, but because the, w this job had it, a workstation, Unix workstation, and all of a sudden I said, I, I kind of know this place. I've been here before. I've been in front of a, of a text terminal, not knowing what to do, and work my way toward learning 100% of it, so I'll do it again. And so I did. 
And I realized, oh, this is a far more interesting. This machine doesn't come pre-installed with basic. This machine comes pre-installed with C. I guess I'm going to learn C next. And so I did, and I learned a few other languages. Um, I made myself an expert in C just because I had nothing else to do. Mind you, I was still a student. I was not a professional developer. Well, I was making money doing software, but I was not yet a graduated software developer. And so all this stuff I was doing, I was doing because I wanted to, and I had a lot of free time to do that. And so once I learned C, I started learning other libraries, curses, sockets, lex, yak. I don't know if these names even mean anything to you, but I'll tell you one thing. Lex, yak, well, that's how we were doing smart languages, language analysis back then. These are the tools of compilers. These are the things that you use to create new languages for your computer. And I was enjoying this time going through all these dozens of libraries. Nowadays, you have hundreds, and I don't know how you do it. But back then, there were just a few libraries that you could actually explore. And I was having a great time. And eventually, I guess I figured out that if I could just learn without care for when am I going to need this, eventually, the, the gigs will come after me. And that's exactly what happened. Because my next job at that same company, I guess someone realized I was always hitting in the, in the, in the server room, in, in typing to one of the terminals, one of those Unix terminals, and they asked me, kid, what are, you, what are you doing there? And I show them, well, see, I just did this C application curses with an interface to the, to, to the web, to the internet. Back, th back then, there wasn't a web. And they say, what? That's not even possible. And I demo, yes, it is. And I guess that landed me my next promotion at that company because they invited me to be part of a team doing applications for clients and database applications. And I learned a couple of other tricks with PSQL, which is Oracle. It's just database, professional databases. And still, I realized this is the way. You just learn something for fun and you go deep. You really grill that manual. You go through the entire documentation. You get kind of obsessed with knowing all the secret corners of that language, of that library, and eventually you become an expert and then you can, you can, the gigs come after you. That's, that is my experience what happened. Some of the most interesting projects I worked on through those years had me building languages that had, uh, were grabbing or simulating database environments and presenting things in spreadsheets. Yes, before spreadsheets existed in these environments, we were coding them. And so that was super exciting. Um, and around 1994, I had that first encounter with a web browser. I mean the very first web browser, Netscape Navigator. Anyone remember that? Mosaic? Yes, of course. Okay, I'm catching up with you guys. Great. By the time we're done, we'll see, oh, we know more than you do, of course. So that first web browser changed or gave me a new obsession. Can you guess? Those were... Well, that was not the, the, the internet years yet. Uh, that took me on a big detour because all I wanted to do was working graphing environments. I was done with text mode and Unix terminals and all that. I said, that's the way of the past. Now, we're going to go Windows. I guess um, I have to admit, I learned Visual Basic. Why, I, why did I learn Visual Basic? Well, remember what my first gig was? I already knew Basic. The only difference this time, companies, enterprises were paying a lot of money to people that knew basic, and they just call it Visual Basic. Yay for me. So I did, I did financial applications for big companies uh, or using nothing else but Visual Basic, Microsoft SQL Server, Visual Basic for application, Crystal Reports, and I'm ashamed. I am really ashamed I went that, <laughs> that far back into, into the tool set. But, you know, I learned a few new tricks. And th that, those were the years when I became sort of an expert in databases, in relational databases, in SQL, and, and I guess that might come handy later on in my journey. 
the Windows years, that, er that era around 95 to 97, you know, there were other very interesting things happening in the world of development of software, namely the web. But you know, it was too early, and I wasn't in the middle of the action. I wasn't uh, at a place that could appreciate, yeah, the world's going to change, internet is going to change everything, and so I, ha I was there stuck in, a, in, in the room just doing uh, Visual Basic. And I, I, I figured out, hmm, this, this, doesn't, this doesn't sit well with me. It is time to take control of my career. Around that time, after a few years of doing this, and I, I stayed. Every one of these stages is taking me a few years. I want that to make, I want to make sure that's clear to everyone because there's a very common fantasy that we are going to learn coding next Saturday. We're going to all get together to free code camp and, they, and a month from now we're going to land our first gig. Oh, next year we're retiring rich with code, right? Uh, no, it actually takes a, a few years. It takes a few years, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, I want to take control of my career. And to take control of my career meant I want to do one kind of system. I want to work in a, in a web project. I, I want to be part of that web revolution. And so it took me a little while. I had to actually move countries uh, from back home in Mexico to Canada. And, and so I guess uh, it worked because what came after was, was a long range of projects that were all very exciting. This was the first, my first attempt to understand what is this world of web and how do we do software in a professional way for the web. And so I learned all kinds of tools and frameworks and uh, you know, very simple languages and net dynamics, web objects. Some of them are still around, by the way. Um, HTML, of course, I already knew C and just realized, oh wait, everything I know in C will come in handy when I'm building my servers. I jump into Python because I figured my, one of these languages is gonna, is gonna own the web and I didn't know which one. Uh, it turns out it would be JavaScript, yes. Um, I, I thought for a moment Microsoft is going well with this understanding distributed with software with their infamous COM model. I don't. Don't even, don't, don't even go there. Uh, uh, I tried Perl. All these were uh, month-long experiments, learning a new language, figuring out how do I build a project, something good in, on this new web, and, and uh, at the same time, build up my skills. Have you noticed how broad I'm going with this career? Like, I didn't stop at anything because I, oh, wait, you know what? My, um, my thing is C. Uh, please don't take me away from my language. I'm very comfortable with my language. I don't want to learn anything else. It's the opposite. If you give me a new language, if you give me a new tool, a new framework, I'm all over it. Because, you know, ultimately that spectrum of skills is not, they're not different things. They all complement each other. You learn tricks here that then you can bring over and cross pollinate and get new, new ideas of how to keep moving forward. I just point that out because there's, these are the myths of starting a new career as a software developer. You, you, you think I'm going to pick one. And if I ask you, uh, some of you have picked JavaScript. Who has picked JavaScript for the for first language? Yes, come on. I know. OK, so if not JavaScript, what else do you pick? Python. No, no Python. HTML. <laughs> All right, yeah. Yeah, that was me. That, that was me back, back then. Yeah, HTML. Um, anyway, but I want to point out, see how broad this, this career is. Like I'm, I'm hitting every single thing that seems to be interesting, and I don't know if it's going to be long run or just a small project. I'll just go deep into it and, and try to get the most out of it. That takes me a few years, and eventually I'm, you know, by, by now I'm a senior developer doing web architectures that were now around 2002. By the way, this is already after the first bubble, inter-bubble burst, right? So, you know, anyone who's left doing web is because they're probably doing it seriously, right? I think. And so, you know, that was the attitude. We're going to be very formal and we're going to do things like, uh, you know, big enterprises do. And I guess 
those were the web architect years in which I, all I had in mind was, oh, I want to build something bigger than this, bigger and bigger. And so that brought me back to Linux, learning Java. I already sort of knew Java from school, but n never really got to use it professionally. So these were the years when I got deep into Java. It was very fashionable. Uh, Java Enterprise, uh, some tools, JBoss, Tomcat, I mean, tools. Uh, these were the years when we were building very large web applications, and these were big servers that run a massive application, and you had like tens of thousands of users, all of them hitting that one server, and you better have a big hunking machine to run that application. We didn't have the cloud back then, and so, you know, you, you just had to build things to be very resilient. Um, I guess there were so many things in, in terms of tool set and how we work. But to me, I'll tell you two things that came in very handy around this time. Um, one, remember how I had learned Pascal? That was way back at the beginning. It, Pascal gave me a very strong object-oriented mindset. And I found that only useful at this point. This was the moment when I, I was asked, can we please design this application, but really go with proper object-oriented analysis and design approach? And I said, oh, wait a second, I know that. Oh, great, so you take, on that, take leadership of that project, you do it. And so, again, you never know why you're learning something and how it's gonna be useful, but it will. And so, take that. There's never such a thing as I'm learning something and I'm, gonna, I'm wasting my time learning, never. Everything will come back, and you don't know if it's going to be tomorrow, in a month, or 10 years later, probably longer in my case, but it will be useful. I had taken my time to really grow uh, confident around Unix, so by the time they threw Linux at me, I said, this is nothing. Of course, of course I can design this, uh, this big web server to be resilient and replicas here and replicas there and process and... Of course I can do this. The web architect mind didn't come up at that time. It had been formed over the years being obsessed with other operating systems, having that attitude to really go deep into that documentation and figure out every little trick I could possibly learn. The web architect years were good, uh, lots of money, I guess, a lot of people would say, well, that's what I want to accomplish with my career. And yet, by the end of it, I was done. I said, this is not it. Where, what else? Where, where else can we find better, more fun? How can we go back to the years when I was learning all these cool things and, and not just building these large enterprise web applications? And so that took me to my first startup. Around 2006, I decided I had... Um, it wasn't my own, but I, my, I decided to jump into the startup world and figured that's probably I'm going to have more freedom to learn, to explore, and to test and try new technologies. And so that around that time, the big buzz was, well, the Web 2.0. I don't know if you ever heard that phrase, but it was a big thing, the Web 2.0, which unfortunately... Uh, I guess it wasn't such a great thing after all because it gave us Facebook. But, uh, you know, the Web 2.0 predicted this, this social network. Uh, we're all, it's going to be all the participatory uh, culture and everyone's going to be doing, you know, a little bit of everything and you know, somehow software is going to be uh, uh, reborn and it's going to make us a better society. I don't think it did. Uh, but, you know, I learned a few more things. And throughout those years, I sort of went back to the basics, uh, say for that little .NET stand. Uh, I, I went back to solidify my knowledge on JavaScript. You know, we were building a startup, so I figured, you know, this might be a very lightweight language that we can implement the startup. We can learn one language and then we'll use the front end, and I guess we can do a lot with this language. Uh, I already knew SQL Server, so it seemed like a logical combination. And at some point, I found myself doing PHP throughout those years, uh, only because that WordPress as a platform became so big that pretty much any direction you wanted to walk, there was a WordPress site. So I guess might as well just learn WordPress. But 
Again, never went into a new area feeling, oh man, this is, this is, this is less or this is not as glorious as that other language. I guess you always learn new things with the same excitement and PHP was no exception. Yeah, I could see the flaws. Yeah, I could see I could do things in differently, in, 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 differently in other platforms, but PHP had, was a bit of a joy. It kind of reminded me of my b uh, basic days where there were very little rules about how you would code your, your page. Um, the startup years were a lot of fun. Those years, uh, exactly as I anticipated, were about letting go and doing whatever came to mind. Okay, let's just build geo application, maps, images, just social networks, interface, everything, when everything, mash up APIs, and that was a lot of fun. We didn't make a lot of money though, and so we had to move on and do new things. But there were, there were good years and, um, and a, lot of, a lot of lessons learned throughout that process. A lot of lessons learned which led me to believe that I was ready for my first company around 2012, I figured, you know, I have learned everything I need from all these startups. I'm gonna do my own. I'm gonna try on my own, and it's all gonna be okay. Oh, um, So my founder years, technically speaking, um, t took me to pretty much where we are now. Uh, you know, JavaScript, Amazon Web Services was growing at the time, but nowadays it sort of governs everything. Node.js, uh, none of these were absolutely new things to me, but you know, the, the tooling around them, I guess it makes sense that I was running or trying to build a company having all these benefits around me because it became so easy. And the architect mind was there waiting and figuring out how I was going to build this cloud-based company, uh, but I was using a lot of the things I had learned back then working for other larger clients. Uh, all the ideas of how to or organize information. You know what, they, it all started back in the days of PSQL. Uh, you know, I, I learned other dives along the way, but and when I came across Mongo, I could figure out, wow, this is, this is really good. But the mind whatever lessons I, I needed were already there from long ago. I had fun with my company and then um, after, after a few years, uh, we decided, you know, this is not taking off, so we're gonna do something else. And, and I, I, I found myself uh, more recently uh, for the past year uh, teaching, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say JavaScript, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say another language, but teaching this idea of building web applications. I mean, and it, it is not one thing or another. I think, and a lot of, a lot of you have heard me at a, at a lecture, it's always about the story. It's about why are we learning these things? What happened at the time that led us to believe that object orientation was important? What happened at the time that led us to believe that you know, we should do databases this way instead of that other way? Why do we care about servers being set up or process or version control? And how do we organize all those things? It only makes sense when you look back at your journey and realize, well, because life happened. Projects happen, and we had to make decisions on how to grow and become better at our craft. Um, I look back at all those years, and I cannot, I cannot pinpoint one thing I learned that I didn't enjoy, that I didn't use at one way or another. And I think out of all this, I want to leave you with some lessons. Um, that's my journey. I didn't even try to count how many languages, how many hours of learning. I think if I have to say, my entire journey as a developer has been one of always be learning. I started in 88, uh, by the way, anyone guess the date? Yeah, no? Come on, 30 years ago. 30 years, so you were the closest. Um, 30 years ago, um, I decided I, want, I have my computer, I'm gonna learn basic. Um, so, I, and I did, uh, everything I could possibly learn. And today I find myself sometimes coming across new frameworks. This presentation, for example, is, is a, it's a React I have framework that I just said, you know, I, I don't know much about this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out, I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna do a better presentation I would do if I was to do it with key, a PowerPoint. And so you always want to be learning. It's the thrill of 
what you're going to get out of those next few hours, next few weeks of going deep into something. And you, don't, you never know when it's going to be useful. You never know how that's going to make you a better developer. I will also point out, and I don't know if this is a theme, or, or, but you notice how I had these faces throughout my journey. So I think it's important you try to see the big picture. What are, what are the things that are happening around me? Don't, don't, don't close yourself into one technology, some technology so much that you, re you don't realize, oh wow, what is the world up to nowadays? And every, every now and then, in my case every few years, you know, be willing to align yourself with the big picture. In my case, I can look back and say, well, it was very important for me to, to stop everything and jump on that plane to Canada so I could do web work. In retrospect, it was a good decision. But at the time, I'd be, is that where everyone is going? I don't know. I, I need to be talking to people. I need to be aware of my times so I can see the big picture and jump in it and, and make decisions and take risks uh, sometimes to be part of that big picture, whether that was the Web 2.0 years, whether that was, well, I guess now we're doing startups, whether that was we're going to start web applications or we're going we're gonna to start doing Unix, Unix uh, applications. Whatever that is, always keep in mind what the big picture might be. Everything you learn will be useful, eventually. You never know how, you never know when. So that hesitation when you see, you know, these obscure language. Okay, let's, let's throw names of obscure languages that you looked at and said, um, I don't know if I should learn that. Any examples out there? Come on. You all have come across one thing that said, eh, I don't know if that's going to be good. All right? <laughs> Pearl. <laughs> nice. uh, what else? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Very obscure, of course. <laughs> Cobol. All right, so now we're talking about time traveling. Of course. My, my point is you never know when any of these things will gon will, is going gonna, is gonna to be useful. So, you know, learn it for the sake of learning, for the sake of training your brain to always be learning. And the last lesson I'm going to give you, or I'm going to leave with you, and, and with this I wrap up, uh, this is it. The journey is not the end goal. It's not, oh, I want that job as a web architect. Oh, no, no, no. Actually, once I got there, I want to keep going over. And, and not above and higher, but just down the valley and into more fun places. Keep that in mind. It's the journey that matters. It's that always walking, always discovering, always changing, always learning. That's the thrill of being software. That is it's not, I'm going to learn one thing and then I'm going to be so good and always going to be doing work in that one language and I'm going to make so much money. No. It's that journey that never ends. I'm... Uh, Thirty years ago, I embar embarked into this into this journey, and I'm not I'm not halfway done, and so many more things I want to learn. Uh, they, they, the world just gets more and more interesting as new things come up, and I want to learn them all. So I'll leave you with that with that uh, a note. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I'm Juan Juan Gonzalez of Lighthouse Labs. <laughs> <clears throat> Do we have time for questions? Uh, let's take maybe one question. One question, okay. While you're setting up. Okay, I, oh, there, we have a question in the back. Question? Oh, back there. Uh, in advance. In advance, two things. Thank you very much for what your story, because I'm also Juan, and I only in the ten years. Ten uh, years is nothing. Yeah, that is why you keep going. Inspire me that keep going. My question would be: um, 
since you own the academy and you see the evolution of the web development from the start to right now, yourself, where do you see the internet going so far? What is the next step? What is the, the next thing that you see is going to happen? Oh, what? Such, such a simple question. Of course, I have the answer prepared for you. Um, in, in all seriousness, uh, my hope, and I'm not, not going to predict, but my hope is that the internet can go back full circle where it started. Because the reason it started so we all could be the owners of our little nodes and our nodes will be connected in all possible ways and we'll never have to depend on one central authority to tell us what to do or how to see the world. And I don't think that's the way we're going, right? So my hope is that we can remember those early years and realize, wait a second, we had it better back then. Let's go back to the blogger years, to the weblog years, to the GeoCities pages years, and, and then we all figure out we don't need anyone. Like We already have all the technology to do this on our own. And whatever that means, whatever languages, whatever frameworks, uh, I'm all for it. All right? Cheers. Thank you, everyone. She went and got them breast implants I said I'm moving too fast Didn't even get a glance I'm ready to eat up track like I'm seated in a restaurant If you had swag like me 